fear through Killarney. Now I'm back to hitching with the wind. But if Mickey Flynn should ever find me, I'll throw me caution all behind me and swear I'll fall on that son of a bitch again. He cracked open a river or two, he beat me suddenly through and through, and so she over my unconscious train. I won me healthy sheriff fights, well, lucky son still have me life since Mickey Flynn beat me dumb and lame. Hello, everyone, and welcome to a very special episode of just the Always Next Year podcast. This is going to go out to all of our individual shows. This will be on TJ's One of Us, PTBNL, um, Whiskey Ramble. It's going to be everywhere. Uh, we are very, very excited to introduce a new member to the team. But first, first, I am your host tonight. I am Shane. I run AMYP. Uh, I bring in all of these people to to give entertainment and right now we need it because literally nothing is going on. Uh, we're all stuck in our arms and that blows. Um, but one way we're going to make that better is we are incorporating comedy into our shows now on purpose, not just ironically in some of these sports shows. Uh, we are introducing our newest show and newest comic and member, Tommy Nicoletti. Tommy, how are you, man? Hello. Uh, I'm good. How are you? I'm good. I'm super excited to have something other than sports to talk about. I mean, um, same. Right. And like, I know that's going to piss a lot of people off who are a AMYP loyal listeners. They're like, well, what else are you good for, Shane? Um, well, almost nothing except comedy. Uh, yeah, and that's honestly. where you come in. Um, so we're super, super excited to uh, to get you in. You have have a history in comedy so far. Um, you've performed locally uh, at yeah. different places. But for right now, people can find you online why don't we start off with some of your links where people can find you uh any social um, media platform or anything like that go ahead so on twitter it's at tommy underscore nicoletti n-i-c-o-l-e-t-t-i -T -T uh and youtube same just tommy nicoletti you can just type it in you'll find me doing right now i'm just making like dumb corona videos because i'm bored and i'm losing my <laughs> mind as well and that's the only thing that's keeping me sane so yeah, and then Instagram, I think, is also uh, Tommy underscore Nicoletti. If you want to follow me, follow me. If you don't, it's all good. So, and I have to, and I did not tell you that I was going to do this, but I'm going to do it anyway. You're basically be best friends with Joseph Gordon-Levitt, correct? <laughs> yeah, because I wore, oh my God, yeah, because of the tax fucking thing that I did. Yes. So, Joseph Gordon-Levitt posted a thing on Twitter it was like for 30 minutes, he was just going to share like ridiculous photos. And I had one where like for my tax return, I bought a giraffe suit because like, <laughs> why the fuck not? And everyone says that I have a long neck like a giraffe. So I was like, dude, yeah, that's like the greatest joke in the world. And it was only like $60. I was like, um, yes. So did that. And then Joseph Gordon-Levitt like actually liked the tweet. <laughs> and like retweeted. I was like, yes. And he commented so, like, on it. He says, I yeah. hope you wore that everywhere. Oh, dude, and I wear it as much as possible. I'm wearing it right now. Of course you are. That's, I mean, look, honestly, yes. if we weren't on a podcast because we've yet to truly and fully evolve oh my to God, dude. video media, you we have one day yet will. to see my final form. I'm like Frieza from Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> That's so corny. <laughs> it's going to be 30 episodes. Krillin dies. Yamcha gets fucked. It's going to, it's, yeah. 10 10. What, what do they do? They're useless. <laughs> Done. And then you finally get to see me. Boom. And then there's Tommy yeah. in the actual. And Frieza, world. I never knew if Frieza was a guy or a girl, which is really. I still don't know. Yeah, which I think is, is very progressive of uh, of of uh, Toriyama or whoever the fuck wrote that. I think it was Toriyama. Who knows? Um, but I, I did. I, I, I always found that funny. I, that was one of the funniest pictures I had ever seen. And it is weird because you were essentially wearing a caricature version of yourself in that dance. Y suit. Yes. It's so meta. It's so, it's meta. so perfect. It's so perfect. Yeah. Um, yeah. so I'll, I'm actually going to have you like retweet that again and like tag all of the different AMYP shows so that oh, yeah, all the different sure. various audiences can see just what we're working with here. Uh, and jo Joseph, <laughs> like best bud, Tom, oh my God, uh, Tommy Nicoletti. But um, but comedy, oh, man, this is not – it's not an easy thing to break into or an easy thing to stay relevant in, and especially in today's society where everything offends everyone. And you had actually texted me a really interesting quote um, that kind of I think says a lot about 
you in a positive way. And I know that some people may hear this in a negative way, but those people are fucking wrong. And that's just is what it is. Um, but the, the quote that you had sent, uh, you know, about finding that con- that line and, and having the willingness to gracefully cross it. Um, and I thought that was brilliant. So first of all, if you remember the the quote, I don't even know if you remember the quote that you had texted me the other day. Yeah. What was it? Who was it from? And why um, is it something that you kind of live by? So I call it Carlin's theory because George Carlin had – he had a really good like uh, – and Dave Chappelle also calls him bars, and I really like how he refers to him like that. So George Carlin had a really good quote, and he said that the role of the comic – is to find where society draws the line in the sand and then deliberately cross it from time to time. And I think that's like really important. And people are kind of forgetting that. And some people are taking comedy too seriously. And then there's other instances. I don't know. I, I The debate part of comedy is so difficult because like all it takes for something to be funny is for someone to find it funny. <laughs> therefore it's funny because it's funny to somebody you know so it's like it's so hard to really like be able to debate that and i think it's like gets ridiculous where people want to try to debate comedy online it's just why it's, it's mm. it at just its, gets boring at its core like comedy is something that has forever been a, a, a societal need you know it, yeah you know jokers and jesters all these different things used to perform for entertainment value and that's incredibly important because you know, to, to bring levity such, yeah go ahead. especially to like dark times like i mean not now necessarily but yeah like when people are scared or when people are feeling some type of way like you always have the people that have to remain the same comedians have to be the people that still make jokes because like no like that's what we do we're still gonna do that of course. And then and, I, and then that creates the distraction for other people to like, you know, maybe take the tension off the moment for like a split second. And I do think that the comedians and comics, uh, you know, all around do have that unique ability to connect with a particular audience that I feel doesn't necessarily connect with the things that are going wrong in society all the time and they bring that level of awareness in like a almost like a romantic kind of a way like this this is your language that you're speaking to your people to your audience to those who you know deem you Tommy Nicoletti funny and you may have a very real point of view and and really good information that you can get to that crowd just by tackling it through humor and wrapping it so, yeah. so eloquently back around and you do a great job with that and a lot of your different bits um and it's something that that I'm sure will feature her a ton. Yeah, of course, man. Um, I don't I don't just pick anyone to join you know the, the AMYP network here, man. You were one yeah, of the one of the well, you are the only comic that I reached out to. Um, so yeah, man, you, you do great work, and, and people are gonna absolutely love you. Um, I hope so I'm ready for it. But uh, like I said, comedy's weird to weird to kind of break into. So you know, first of all, what kind of got you into comedy in the first place? And if you have any heroes in the industry, um, you know, who may they be? Um, so I always kind of grew up in a household where I could just like laugh, or others were laughing. So it was kind of fun that way. But the first person, because I watched a lot of stand up in middle school, but no one. Any anyone that I watched, it wasn't like, oh, I want to do that. It was always like, I don't think I could do that, or I don't have the want to do that. But then I watched Daniel Tosh's 07 completely serious stand-up special, and that like changed everything. I don't know what it was about that special, because it's not like the greatest special in the world or anything like that. But like at the time, it hit really hard, like, the relentless of how good his writing was at the time, and then he got Tosh.0, and now he's just kind of like, oh, I'm the douchebag comic, but, like, he's still good, <laughs> he's still good, but, like, I miss when he was sillier, I miss when he was sillier, but, um, because that's, like, the guy that inspired me, but, yeah, and then, obviously, Pryor, Carlin, uh, Williams, Hicks, Murphy, Rock, Chappelle, um god put throw bill burr in there and patrice o'neill has an asterisk if he was alive he'd probably be the best comic right now i think he would be toe and toe with dave Chappelle right now i dig it man um deep history for for comedy for you and i do love the fact that you know it was you know it's kind of a childhood environment that you 
had, which I don't think a lot of people always had, um, you know, and to, to keep, keep comedy and keep joy, uh, and probably some sarcasm because I know your personality. I have to assume that those who molded you are also very sarcastic. Um, uh, at times, I mean, I'm white, so I just had, I, you know, <laughs> things worked out. It's, it wasn't like, it wasn't like a big deal. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Looking back, it was kind of like, I, I don't know. I had really nothing to complain about. There you go. Um, all right. So we're, we're obviously going to be bringing you in here uh, on uh, a podcast first kind of a basis. But we, we do know that you have additional aspirations, you know, beyond just the audio platform at this point. First of all, what is the name uh, of the podcast that, that you're going to be hosting and running? And what's kind of your your ideal theme for it or any minor ideas that are going into it? Um, well, the name is uh, not another podcast. And that's just because, like, I don't know, I think it's funny that there's so many podcasts. So I just thought it would be a funny, like, parody ish name. And uh, but, yeah, I just want it to be a love letter to comedy, just all things that I find funny but that I think others might find funny as well. So like a segment that I want to do is a couple segments of like uh, unsheltered lunch, which would be just me eating different food that I've never tried since I'm uh, Asperger as shit. So, <laughs> um, so I, I want to, I want to like get over the anxiety of food because it's, it's annoying. It's just really annoying and I need to get over it. Um, so it'd be therapeutic and hilarious to do that, I think. And then any sketch ideas, movie pitches that I come up with during the week, I can just pitch them on the show. And then just a geek out about stand-up. My heroes, whoever uh, is a guest, if there's a guest, a co-host, whoever, um, you know, just talk comedy. Who our heroes are, who we're inspired by, um, and who to look out for, who some of the... Um, comedians right now who have like albums out that you should be checking out like sam merle has um oh, I, I i forget the name of it because i'm a douchebag but no <laughs> he has he has um i think it's i got this and it's really fucking good and it's at like 1.5 million like comedians that are self um producing are are doing well and that's awesome to see comedians have the power all the power again within the industry going forward I want to see more of that, and we're seeing a lot of it, and I like that. So yeah. I want to just support everything comedy on the show. I dig that, and you know, obviously you'll be you know, streaming your own your own content throughout that as well, which is is something where I mean, all the AMYP guys who who now know you uh, are looking forward to. Um, you also have a TikTok. Um, you have joined the the teens and the Ute. I. I mean, yes, but like I don't post on there because it, it sucks. <laughs> of course, it sucks. It's not. Yeah, it's not. I thought it'd be fun, and it's not fun, so I don't post on there as much, and I'm sad. Man. I thought it'd be fun. I thought it would be fun, and it's not. Fun. I'll be honest. I have. But seen... yo, they make it look fun, yo. It's fucked up. I don't like they, it. Well, they I make know. it look it's... really fun, and it's not. It's it's ridiculous. I will say. Yeah. The only TikTok of yours that I have seen, you posted it to one of the social media platforms that you're on, is you like jumping on a bed as if you were like a fucking pterodactyl oh, or yeah, like yeah, T-Rex yeah. or something? Yeah, yeah that was because uh, we found out uh, Tom Holland was remaining as Spider-Man. Or there was some Sony was PMSing and they were like, no, we're going to take Spider-Man to Disney. Right. Disney was like, bitch, no the fuck you're not. And then <laughs> uh, Tom Holland was back and then I was really excited and then – um, and Tom Holland didn't like it, so I guess he doesn't like Spider-Man fans. I'm kidding. I, I love Tom Holland, but I also love Tom Holland. Uh, incredibly yeah, awesome. talented, multi-talented human. Yeah, um, <laughs> very, very talented human. <laughs> Talking about um, peak human. That's peak human right there. That is peak human. Uh, so we we do this thing, uh, and by we uh, and do this thing, I, I mean you're the the first who's actually going to go through through this process. Mm. Um, because you are, you're the first non-grouped bit that I've kind of acquired here. Um, you know, I've always been acquiring people and things in chunks, and you're a standalone guy, um, and, and we're we're excited for that. And because of that, you're coming with an, an audience that is just yours, and we're bringing you into an audience of seven or eight different podcasts that are already with the AMYP network, and no one fucking knows you yet. 
So we are going to do a thing called Tommy's 13. I am going to ask you 13 really, really basic questions in a fairly rapid fire thing. You can either answer them 100% honestly uh, and take a minute if you need to, or you can just roll with the first thing that comes to your head. You're a funny guy. I feel like you're pretty good on your feet here. (laughs) Okay. And I promise they're, they're, they're easy. Okay. So you ready? I don't know if I trust you. You, you can partially trust me. There might be like one oh, or two. Oh, okay. All right. There's going to be one or two that throw me the fuck off. All right. All right. All right. Maybe. One okay. or two that might right. make you think a little bit more. All right. Oh, Here we go. Dude, that's my, like, that's my kryptonite. Anyway, go. Go. Thinking and being a person? <laughs> yeah, a little bit. A little bit. All right, man. Well, here we go. We're, we're going to start off Tommy's 13 now, semi rapid fiery. Tommy has already told us that he has a fear and an anxiety. Of food because he's not a person. So Tommy, what is your favorite food? Oh, oh, that's so hard. I want to say pizza, honestly, like a good pizza. Sounds like every other child like in America. Good, like a good pizza, maybe, yeah, no, or tacos, but like not, but not like a Mexican taco, like an American taco. That's <laughs> disgusting. Like one, yeah, yeah. An American taco that's disgusting. Yeah, an American – yeah, that's like disgust- – like because you, you know what I mean? Because like the more disgusting something is, that means like the better it's going to taste. I, I mean I, I can't dispute the logic on that. I mean, you Question really two. Right? Exactly. <laughs> Your favorite stand-up special that you have seen? Um, oh, okay. So – Oh, that's so hard. That's so hard. This is one of two that I feel felt like we're going to make you have to think because I yeah. felt like there were too many. There's so many. W- what are we talking about here? I will answer this seriously if, if you if you want. Like, yeah, what are we talking about here? Are we talking different, like, alive comics? Like, best special, like, that has of people that are alive or people that are dead? It could be either. Uh, just your... Like if someone asks you, like, Probably, "Hey, I'm, go ahead." Um, w- one of Pryor's, I don't remember the name of it, but I think it's the Sunset Strip one. I don't know if it's okay. that. I believe that one, or Eddie Murphy Raw. Eddie Murphy Raw is a classic for everyone. People yeah. dig that. And then probably George it. Carlin again. That special is really fucking good. If you want he a is special someone. that'll. Yeah, if you want a special where, like, it'll make you think and laugh, but it's not central, like, you're not just going to laugh your fucking ass off, you're going to laugh and, like, be thinking. George Carlin, again, dude, it's fucking awesome. He's brilliant. Yeah, uh, he And really he is, is one of those, you know, comics that, I miss, that tie I that, societal difficulties and struggles and real world things and and bring it totally full circle. Um, brilliant, brilliant one of the comic. Best. One of the best to ever do it. All right, so we got the, the, the preseason questions one and two out of the way, and I'd like to remind Tommy and all of our listeners of the de- definition of rapid fire what, oh my for the God. remaining 11 questions. Oh, Jesus, fuck. Okay. So here we go. I'm slow in nature, though. It's just, okay. All right. Fine. I know. Rapid fire for you is standard fire for everyone else. <laughs> yeah, dude, it's bad. So- <laughs> all right, go. I sh- maybe I should have pre-screened some of these for you. No, nah, you're uh, fine. It's good. We, but here we go. We'll get through it. We'll just get through it. It's whatever. We will. It's it's your commercial, <laughs> so we will get I mean, through it. I mean, I guess. Yeah, that is true. Um. All right, so a guilty pleasure of yours. Oh, uh, video games. Okay. Uh, oof, I have some questions that I can't get to because it's not part of the rapid fire, so I will continue yep, on. Yep, exactly. <laughs> uh, all right, your favorite television show. Oh, um, right now, currently, BoJack Horseman, even though it's over. So good. Fucking hate that show, but okay. What? I, I mean, I know it's you not for everyone. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's not for everyone. It's not for everyone. It's very niche. <laughs> it, it is. It was, honestly, it was recommended to me by a friend. All right, either I, that or Archer. Archer's a quality choice, and I accept that one farther, there far more Fair enough. easily there you go. than the other. All Compromise. Right. I got you. There it is. That's where we're at. All right, so uh, ever. Everyone's got one. We've already semi-established yours as Joseph Gordon-Levitt, but I'm going to roll out the question anyway. Your celebrity crush? Uh, yeah, JGL. Of course. Yeah, of course. Yeah. That's what, yeah. I mean, yeah. it shouldn't be everyone's. It's a beautiful man. Yes. 
Um, <laughs> that that's peak human. That's so. Peak human. <laughs> that is peak human. <laughs> that is peak human. JGL um, get get out. Oh of yeah, here. angels that's in the outfield. Dude. That's a dude. That's a dude. That's the one. All right, uh, your favorite movie. Inception. Go-to movie. Thank you, man. That is my favorite movie. How the fuck? Yep. I, how have we never talked yep. about that? That's brilliant. I, I I don't know. I can talk about that movie for hours. I'm. Oh, yeah. well, we will eventually have a podcast. I'm oh, sure talking about it. just oh, that, yeah. breaking down oh, whether yeah. it falls or not. Yes. Um, okay. I'm down. Hundred <laughs> percent. All right. Uh, an establishment that you will absolutely not patron. So somewhere that you will not go. A business, a shop, anything. Oh, dude. I I don't I don't know, man. Like the, everyone's just, got somewhere that's pissed them off. Like. Like a fast oh, food restaurant, shit. a game okay. store, like anything. Well, I mean, yeah, GameStop. I just don't go there anymore. All right. Just, no, just no. There's no need for you anymore. Well, they've just closed 200 stores effective. I don't know. Yesterday. Oh, Toys R Us, because so, I used to work there, and I and I don't. Yeah, Toys R well, Us. Was they don't fun. exist anymore. Exactly. Exactly. So Good. Go. All right. A, I used to love Toys R Us too when I was a kid. No, well, as an adult, kid, no. You were conditioned to love it as a kid. Exactly, that, that's man. Disney for children. Um, a <laughs> hidden talent. <laughs> Yo, that's yours. so true, though. What's up? A hidden talent of yours. Um, a hidden talent? If you have one. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, I have a, I have a really long neck. You do. You're like Martin Hanks, and I know that you don't know who that yeah. is. But he was a 49er. I don't. Yeah, oh, <laughs> I figured well, not. Well, that's fine. He was a San Francisco 49er in the 90s. But yeah, no, like it's actually really cool. I am like part giraffe almost. Yeah, you, you. Uh, it's like pretty said, incredible. You are the caricature in which Joseph Gordon-Levitt has now forever known you as. I know. Yeah, and he will forever know me as. Of course he will. Uh, your gamer tag, you've mentioned that you are a video game guy in case any of our people mm-hmm. want to come on and play you in any of the games that you have. Um. All right. So I have two, though. So <laughs> so if I'm playing games, one of them is Autismo the Wise, and that's like a <laughs> Star okay. Wars Darth Plagueis kind of meme. And then the other one is Septibus Orgy. Nice. <laughs> yeah, it puts it puts Philly on the map, you know. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, everyone right. always asks me, "You from Philly?" And I go, "Yeah." What gave it away? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what part? Uh, an embarrassing moment in your life. Um. Oh, I have so many. We know. Oh, dude, that's that's rough. Uh, probably when I got kidney stones. Like tenth grade, that was pretty embarrassing. How was that embarrassing? Cause like the doctor was weird about it. I don't. Uh, yeah, no. It's just yeah. That was just embarrassing for me. It's not like a public thing. Well, now it is, I guess. Oh, uh, it is now. Dun dun dun. All right. Uh, most commonly performed active task or activity that goes into Tommy Nicoletti's week. What is something that you do the most? Uh, write jokes. All right. Your this is one of my favorite that's questions. That's so on the fucking nose, but it's it, that's honestly what it is. I just sit around and I just write jokes. And that's good. That means you're forever yeah. going to have content I mean, yeah. for the show. I mean, hopefully. Yeah, that's the goal. So this next one is one of my favorite questions and I stole it from another podcast. Okay. Um and I feel like it's important because you're a picky eater and I feel like everyone likes this particular oh, food. Fuck, so dude. what is your favorite way to eat a potato? I guess like a like I if it's a French fry. So if a, a French fry. Yeah, yeah. I guess our fr- French fries are potatoes, I believe. I think. <laughs> I mean, yes. The f- yeah, that's, right. Yeah. I, I I don't know. My my brain doesn't go past that. <laughs> <laughs> it's just it's first, just that's the potato. I think. Oh my God! First base yeah. of the potato world, and he's just sitting so, out there. So I guess yeah. No, I don't eat like potatoes like that. Like I I haven't had mashed potatoes. Like no, no. Oh, well, hey, like, no. that, that's going to be another thing that happens and occurs on this show, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. All right. And the 13th question, and this is just a personal favorite of mine. I do ask this one to quite a quite a few people. If you were ever met in a back alley, who is the one celebrity or comic in your particular case that you would 100% not 
want to get into a fight with. Oh my god. Okay. All right. Oh my god. That I wouldn't want to get into a fight with. That you would not want to get into a fight with. Okay. Option A is JGL because I we homies. <laughs> We're supposed to be homies. Like you can't. I, I don't want to be fighting you. You know what I mean? <laughs> Um, well, I mean, he's one. He would be one, uh, and two would probably be like any of the kids from Stranger Things, because I don't want to get into a fight with children. I think that's fair. All right. I mean, I think they're still like you yeah, went like a really different yet. route on this. Like well, most yeah. people for the back alley fighter, like let let me think of the biggest I mean, strongest it, dude. Honestly, though, it would be great to have Patrice O'Neill just stand there making fun of me as I get mugged or whatever you said to narrate like, that. Yeah, oh, that'd that would be, be great. brilliant. Yeah, uh, honestly, trees, that should be something Harlan. you should welcome for your career. <laughs> is have a have a fantastic iconic yeah, comic. Just ha- just have narrate the, your the closest I can get is just uh, Colin Quinn will be standing there. It'll be <laughs> Colin Quinn and Bobby <laughs> Kelly will just be standing there, just narrating me getting mugged in a back alley or some shit. I would love Morgan Freeman to narrate my ass whooping. Honestly, dude. Like I think that'd be pretty solid. I would love I would love to see they Morgan Freeman me. have to actually like narrate like an R rated, like a super R rated, funny, like Seth MacFarlane comedy. Like you know how Patrick amazing. Stewart does like a character. I would love to see Morgan Freeman do like just a, a whole season on Family Guy. That'd be great. It'd be so I, dumb. It would be amazing though. Yeah. Because exactly. you're always gonna recognize that voice and you're gonna put together exactly. it's just gonna be brilliant. Um but just Tommy, like that was Stewart. the that just like Patrick Stewart. That was the Tommy's thirteen uh, for, and honestly, it was an inaugural one because, like I said, I typically acquire groups, not solo acts. Um, and uh, so, thanks for for playing along on that one, man. Hey, um, no we that went so fun. far twelve minutes longer than we anticipated going for this commercial. This is effectively <laughs> now becoming a segment. I think we're we're rapidly approaching that that time. Um, so let's go real quick. One more time. Remind everyone of your links and what your future podcast will be called. Uh, the future podcast will be called not another podcast. And, uh, you can find me on Twitter at Tommy Nicoletti dot com uh, at Tommy Nicoletti, Tommy underscore Nicoletti. And then YouTube is Tommy Nicoletti. And then Instagram would be Tommy Nicoletti or yeah, you'll figure it out. We'll it's it's that. basically that. It's basically that. It's a variation of those two. It's either Tommy Space Nicoletti or Tommy underscore Nicoletti. You'll figure it out. You're smart. There it is. You're smart. It's the one that looks like a giraffe. Um, I mean, yeah, so, that too. You'll figure that yeah, out. Exactly. <laughs> the uh, one or with the, the one that's really long by neck. Joseph Gordon Levitt. Uh, I mean, that's that hasn't happened yet. He has not followed me. It might. You never know. He's, I, it's he a better. That'd be awesome, dude. He's that'd probably got great. a burner. He be, um, dude, dude. You know how clutch that would be? He hits me up after this or whatever the fuck happens with this, and, he, and he's on a burner. He goes, yo, dude, it's just Gordon Levitt. I'm on a burner. What's good, man? That'd be awesome. That'd that's be it. Amazing. Yeah, that's guest number one. Oh, uh, dude. Give him a voice, you, uh, like a voice bro. box, a changer, voice changer, whatever they're called. <laughs> hey, this is just, just Gordon Levitt. <laughs> that's it. I'll, just, I'll, I'll wear my Bane mask. And I'll call oh my God! That. Yeah, I was uh, made of the darkness. So, <laughs> <laughs> all right, we're approaching thirty minutes. We gotta cut it. We gotta cut it. Um, right. So you, you're gonna be able to find Tommy and all the links that he stumbled through moments ago. We're actually gonna share all of those different links on all the different uh, Twitter Twitter handles that we currently are using for uh, for AMYP. So first and foremost, you can find it on uh, at a n y podcast then you can find it on my personal i think most of you guys follow me at this point it's at shane underscore mead you can find it on our hockey shows podcast that's going to come out it's uh disciples of ed that is at disciples of ed uh you can find it at our philadelphia philly show which is uh the ptb and l podcast because we swear to god we will eventually name it we just don't know when or what uh maybe <laughs> tommy will name it for us we don't know um but that is at a m y p phillies um, and then we have Whiskey Ramble uh, at Whiskey Ramble PC, not because we are, but because podcast didn't fit in the handle. Um, but uh, we'll we'll kind of be throwing all these links out there uh, several times uh, over the next you know week or two as as we kind of get things started here for Tommy. Um, while you are 
searching and navigating through all of Tommy's material that he currently has out and all the different avenues, I think mainly YouTube, uh, yeah. that he has things. Um, during the time that it is loading on your computers, I want you on your phones to go to www.thejackdolls.com and support our intro outro music here for AMYP. Um, as you know, with the coronavirus, we've said this at the front and back ends of all of our shows in the last several weeks. Uh, many small businesses and especially musicians uh, are out of an income. Their entirety of their yearly income comes from performing shows for people like yourselves, people like us. Um, and to know that their shows have now been canceled and their livelihood has impacted their children, um, they're they can use all of the extra bits that, that we can kind of throw their way. So if you want to check out any of their merchandise, it's again, www.jackdolls.com. You can also find them on Facebook, just search the Jackdolls. Uh, and then their Patreon, it's just www.patreon.com backslash the Jackdolls. Um, they have a podcast called The Rookery. They're great. They're awesome humans. Um, and, and it would mean a lot to them. It would mean a lot to me if you... Uh, you know, if you were able to, to donate a little bit of money towards their, uh, towards their way and you'll get great stuff back, whether it's t-shirts, coffee mugs, uh, CDs or albums, just online music, um, you know, or extra podcast episodes. They're pretty good for that too. Um, whiplash over there is a funnier than anything human. He's honestly, he should be on a show with Tommy at some point. He's pretty fucking great. Um, you would enjoy it. He is a funny, funny guy. Um, but, uh, Tommy, thank you so much, man. One, for joining the network. Two, for coming on and shooting this 15-minute commercial that we've doubled in time. Um, <laughs> I think that that's because we both can't shut the hell up when we talk to each other, which I think is a Basically. really good sign for all future I, shows I mean, to yeah. come. Of course. <laughs> all right. Well, Tommy, uh, I'm excited to get stuff going, man. Uh, and so am I. Yeah. And then for now... Uh, I am going to, we're going to sign this one out. We're going to send this back over to the Jack dolls to send us out and we will see you guys. Like I said, in the coming weeks with Tommy's first show. I want me healthy sheriff fights, well lucky son still have me life since Mickey Flynn beat me down and lame.